Do I really have to say what I'll be rocking in terms of a loadout? You've seen this loadout before, you know what this loadout is, you know exactly what I'm doing. That of course being my NCR slash Appalachian Alliance Sergeant loadout. For of course, Sector 9's June 8th event. Sad to say, I'm not able to acquire tickets online because of uh, the fact I'm a cash only kind of guy. I can hope I'm able to make it to the event actually, or at least be able to get into the event via cash. Be able to you know, anyway, though, either way, though. So, yeah, I don't gotta say what I'm rocking because let's face it, I've rocked either, of course, the mechanics or the Milwaukee safety glasses, which, believe me, these things actually work really, really good. They legitimately do. I'm rocking my red beret when not on the field. On the field, I'm rocking my Fallout Combat helmet build with, of course, a homemade battery pack in the back. I'm rocking my Alice setup with, of course, the H harness. Because honestly, the H-Harness has been my go-to because it's actually legitimately very comfortable. I've never had any issues with it. And I love the big butt pad now that I got in the back, which also has a handle on it. So that way, you know, if someone's got to drag my happy ass somewhere, they can drag my happy ass. And I'm able to actually get my hand up in there really nice to basically drop stuff into the pack itself. So you know what? I've actually got a lot of things. And of course, i got a radio pouch for the thing that is my comms. Which comms being, of course, my Beofing AR-152 ham radio. Well, ham, walkie, talkie, radio type deal with, of course, the Beofeng mic, which I'm able to actually communicate in. And, uh, yeah, that's just one of those things. But, yeah, this will be my comms. Document for the radio channels uh, in the Discord for Sector 9, of course, in the Sector 9 Discord, for those who want to know what the radio channels are. Uh, hopefully they made a pinned comment on that. I hope. If not, uh, oh, shit. Of course, I'm not going to talk about the fact of I'm bringing my leather fingerless hard knuckle gloves or the fact of I'm bringing, of course, a canteen, maybe more to basically keep myself nice and hydrated through the event. Because let's face it, I'm probably going to be drinking a lot of water. Which that's another thing. Stay hydrated, folks. It's going to be in June, which means it's going to be hot as hell. Or at least decently hot for Tennessee and the South. It's going to be hot. It's going to be hot. That's all I'm going to say. It's going to be pretty hot. Or even the fact that my bottoms are basically... <clears throat> M81 Woodland BDU bottoms. Be glad you're at that angle, not below, because that'd probably be embarrassing, you seeing me in my boxer shorts. Don't ask how I was able to do this. It was already hard enough practicing to do it without ripping these things apart. In terms of guns, I make it no secret that I love my M16s, which is why one of the guns I'm bringing out there, of course, is the ENC M16A1, which is now done up in the... Fallout Tactics Colt M16, which again is basically just this, but with a rounded handguard instead of the classic triangular. Why, you may ask? Again, because of Fallout Tactics. Even had the Birdcage Flash Hire, which was on the Fallout Tactics M16. Just saying. Sticking with the Colt theme, I will of course also be bringing my Colt M4 right here. This is going to be my night game M4. I'm going to have a nice little flashlight here tracer unit up here, and this is going to be my night game M4, just because, well, that is actually what I need. This thing is just wobbling all over the damn place. Jesus Christ. Again, just so I don't have to kind of switch up magazines, or at least kind of have to interchange magazines, this is going to be my, this is legitimately going to be my M4 that I'm going to use for the night game, just because, well, I haven't used this a lot. I haven't really played with it a lot, and I kind of want to remedy that. So yeah, this is going to be my M4 for the night game, and it is going to probably be a lot of fun, I'll be honest. Speaking of tracers, you're probably wondering what I'm going to be using for tracers. Well, that's actually pretty simple. Tracers I'll be using are actually Bioshot .28 BBs. These things have actually been legitimately really good. They do work pretty well, and I'm probably going to get more of these, or at least more different tracers, to kind of test them out. But Bioshot is definitely worth it just for the money, so because I was able to get 4,500 rounds of these things back in the day, uh, when I first got them, for about under, like, 30 something dollars so hey 0.28s for like 30 bucks 4500 and i've still got half a bag of these things left no brainer i'm rocking these at the night game speaking of tracers the tracer unit i'll actually be rocking is of course the t238 spitfire this thing right here has done it all been there done that got the thing you know i've got the t-shirt this thing has legitimately done what i wanted it to do and works amazing and I absolutely love it. Now as a backup trace unit in case this one goes down or the battery dies, I have of course the T238 Griffith. 
Uh, if you haven't seen my review on that, go check it out. This legitimately is a good unit, specifically for Airsoft, and, a, well, and Gel Ball, of course, but it, it does legitimately work. Honest to God, it works. While not the RGB, and I went with the, you know, basic, the, these two legitimately are worth it just for the money, because these are both very affordable tracer units, and, again, I'm hoping T228 actually sends more stuff my way, because I would love to check out more of their stuff. I legitimately do. Our affiliate link down below in the pinned comment, of course. Now, in terms of tactical flashlight, because I'm blind as a bat at night and I don't have any MVGs, I will, be, of course, be using the Fiaci FL series. This is their new flashlight, the new tactical flashlight series, uh, that has a built-in battery for charging, or you can swap out the battery. Basically, it's, it's legitimately kind of nice, very cool, has an adjustable brightness to it, which I haven't really seen a difference in it, but, you know, that's just how it is. Uh, I will be bringing this along with the pressure pad and all that good jazz, mostly Fiaci stuff I'm rocking on that M4. But, uh, yeah, it is what it is. So let's continue on, of course, to the main event, which, of course, is talking about the event itself in June 8th. So one more thing. I will be bringing some Thunder Bees, of course. I will be bringing not only, of course, this little Thunder Bee here, the regular Thunder Bee head, just because. And I will also be bringing the tried and true stick Thunder Bee grenade, because this thing legitimately has worked, does work, and I'm able to swap out heads on the field in under 20 seconds. And those 20 seconds are definitely worth it. And I'm going to be using this a lot because I've got like eight heads to use, eight shells to use. So yeah, that's, that's definitely going to be used a lot. No sidearm this time, or at least I haven't decided yet if I'm not going to bring a sidearm yet. I have not decided yet. So it is what it is. But what I will say, of course, is that I'm definitely going to have a lot of fun at the swap meet because the swap meet, ladies and gentlemen, is where the big stuff happens, where we're able to get stuff, where we're able to sell stuff, buy stuff, which is why, ladies and gentlemen, you're no longer going to see me in this attire, you're going to see me in the attire where I'm going to talk to you about what I'm bringing to the swap meet. All right, first of all, I'm like, we got ourselves an SRU bulb kit. That's right, an SRU bulb kit right here. We got an SRU bulb kit right here. This is SRU bulb kit right here. Yeah, yeah, SRU bulb kit. This right here is an SRU bulb kit. This thing right here, all the parts included. That's right. I'm gonna be getting this right here at that swap meet. That's right, all swap meet. SRU bulb kit. Gonna take it to the swap meet. We're gonna be able to trade it. I am all for trade. I'm all for cash. Only asking for probably eighty-five, 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 sold. Next up on the swap meet kit, we also have ourselves a nice little Roni kit right here. This thing is not working for me because I cannot figure out how the thing works. Because it's got a gate MOSFET in there. Can't figure out how the gate MOSFET. I don't know how the gate MOSFET works. Trade, 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 trade. Okay. Okay. Setting aside my my attempt at a Texas auction here for a second. Because believe me, I'm just finding an excuse to use my Stetson here. Just finding an excuse. To translate what I just did earlier, I am bringing an SRU bullpup kit. For those who don't know about SRU, SRU as of late has done a lot of wicked stuff with 3D printing and even now has gotten to the point of actually making a real steel bullpup kit that also can be used for airsoft. But the big thing though, ladies and gentlemen, is that this kit right here is just a tiny bit damaged, not a lot. But of course, all the parts are in there. I am looking for trade of retro parts or, you know, some cash. Just, we'll negotiate on the, on the field. We'll negotiate. Up on the docket is, of course, the KWA uh, Ronin. The KWA Ronin. I could not, for the life of me, figure out how to fix. I don't know how to fix it. It's up for trade and or sale. And uh, again, we'll trade for retro parts and or retro guns. Or, you know, just stuff. Basically, if you worked on gate MOSFET stuff before, you can basically, you know, probably fix this on your own thing. But again, this is a Roni. Still works. I mean, I've got magazines to kind of work it. Again, you know, one of those things. Uh, you know, like I said, all the parts are there. Just, I don't know how to work on a game MOSFET. So, yeah, trade or sale. Again, in my collection, I am, of course, going to be trading and sailing. This one actually does work. It's a bull pup. This one, I know a lot of people are probably going to be scratching their heads about, going like, why are you wanting to get rid of it? Simply put, not in my colors. If I want a Tavor, I want to actually be the legitimate full-length Tavor, not this carbine Tavor. Don't get me wrong. It's a cool Tavor. It's got a lot of cool features, but the... I just... I just... I don't know. I don't know. I just don't really like it all that much. Yes, I can put M-Lock on the rail here, but again, this is one of those guns that's definitely going in the tray in the swap meet pile. So yeah, this is definitely going to be put on the swap meet. This is definitely going to be sold, traded, what have you. Again, we'll accept retro guns and or retro parts for it. Or... But a little bit of spending cash. I'm not that greedy, so you don't got to worry about me asking over 100 bucks for something. Probably about $50 at most. 
Again, moving on. Before we move on to the parts part of this thing, <laughs> uh, play on words. I am, of course, going to be also bringing some KWA magazines that go with the Ronin, like I said. The other thing is that I will also be bringing some surplus. That surplus, of course, is two M1 carbine cleaning kits, or at least that's what I believe it is. The little bad boys right here are M1, or at least that's what it says. Yeah, here we go. We got M1 cleaning rod case, which is basically just for either M1 carbine or M1 Garand. This is, again, I got three of these things. I'm keeping one for myself, but I'm bringing these two for those who are of the World War II collector's sphere and need something for their World War II impression kit. Uh, they are actually in good condition. We have one that has a green tab. We got one that has a khaki tab. Again, we'll be bringing these for trade and sale. In terms of parts, good sweet Jesus Christ, what are you looking for? I've got rails of all shapes and sizes. Be they M-Lock, be they key mod, be they regular, I've got rails. I even got a freaking L96 body right here that I ain't doing nothing with. So if y'all need an L96 body, let me know in the comment section. We'll meet up at that swap meet. But seriously though, folks, I have got parts for fucking days. So I'll be bringing a lot of parts, including AR bodies that I don't need nor want. And like I said, I'll be bringing some parts, including some Crytac parts, so that way you guys can do Crytac builds if you want. Like I said, I've got parts, guys. I literally have parts for days. So yeah, we'll see you at the swap meet. Needless to say, I do have a lot of stuff. I legitimately do have a lot of parts. I've got a lot of things I'm definitely bringing to the swap meet, but at the same time, I'm also coming to the game with high expectations of a lot of fun and making a lot of new friends. Again, really, really looking forward to the June 8th event. I hope to see you guys at the June 8th event. And in terms of story, because everyone knows, whenever I put on the NCR loadout, there's always a story behind it. There's always something going on behind the scenes. And all I can say is, you'll have to wait and find out. you have to wait and find out. But until then, ladies and gentlemen, as always, I've been Airsoft Al, and I shall see all you lovely, lovely people in the next video and at Sector 9's June 8th event. Tickets can be got through the pinned comment down below. And I shall see all you lovely people in the next one. Till next time. Later.